Oh, well, he's very popular, Ed. The sportos, the motorheads, geeks, sluts, bloods, wasteoids, dweebies, dickheads. They all adore him. They think he's a righteous dude. That is why I have got to catch him this time. To show these kids that the example he sets is a first-class ticket to nowhere. Oh, Ed, you sounded like Dirty Harry just then. Really? Uh-huh. How are you? I am good. How are you? Hang on. Where's my video? Yeah, I can't see you quite yet. Hang on. Where's my video? <laughs> there it is. Let me lower this down. Ah, there we are. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Thanks so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Oh, happy to do it. Yeah. I read the, or I saw the documentary, the Beyond the Curve. Oh, cool. That was really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, uh, so the story I'm writing is just about people like you, you know, who believe the earth is flat and I'm not coming uh, to it from any place but interest. You sure. know, and, and fascination. So I'm not going to be one of those, oh, blah, 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 blah against it. You know, uh, I'm just interested in learning more. So that, that's cool. Yeah. Well, just to get started, tell me a little bit about your background, you know, where you were from, that sort of stuff. I was born and raised, uh, similar to the documentary, uh, I was born and raised on Whidbey Island, Washington. Okay. Up in Seattle, and I spent the first quarter of my life here, and mm. then I went off and ended up moving to Colorado in 95 to okay. play video games for a living. No kidding. No kidding. Uh, wow. Won, I know. Won this little... I was a, I was a sous chef in a restaurant on Whidbey <laughs> Island, and... I was playing this little video game tournament, a computer computer tournament, uh, by a developer out in in Tokyo, mm -hmm. and the publisher happened to be in Boulder, Colorado, <clears throat> and I played the tournament for a year. And that was in '94, uh -huh. and won it, and then they hired me. And, wow! Yeah, and I flew out, and I became their ringer because apparently, for whatever reason, they were one of those few game publishers where nobody actually played. They, oh, yeah, really? they, they had testers, but nobody was actually a gamer in that company. Huh. So they they didn't have any love or passion for the game. So I went around to the conventions like um, um, Macworld Boston and Macworld San Fran and E3 and stuff like that. And yeah. I would play games in front of people and you know make the games yeah. better than they were. Yeah, uh, and that and was before that was a thing. That you know, was a thing, was yeah. Now, that was back before there were teams and all this other fun right. stuff that they're doing. This was this was old school playing playing games for a living, and that's what I did for the first part when I was out in Colorado. Never been to Colorado before in my life. Uh, oh wow! And spent did that for three years, I think, and then they finally folded, and uh, I ended up teaching proprietary software in the Boulder area. Was great for startup companies. Back oh then. yeah. Oh yeah, in the mid '90s and late '90s. Oh, so great. And uh, plus the weather was great, you know, 300 sunny days a year yeah, and, you know, nice. compared to 220 overcast days a year, you know. Yeah, I don't know if I can handle Washington. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, if you're born here, you don't really notice it that much. Right. And that's what I did. Uh, I was I was in Colorado for 20 years and wow. taught proprietary software, traveled all over the country and sometimes outside the country, uh, teaching people how to use software, which was pretty complicated and so mm. part of my job was to boil it down for uh blue collar workers basically oh, okay. a lot of it was time and attendance software uh, time time keeping software time tracking and oh. that's what i did and in high level and when i wasn't on the road i was doing high level support calls for you know because this was expensive stuff yeah and uh so people were calling up under all different methods of duress I'm sorry, mm -hmm. duress. Right. And they're really, you know, crying, screaming, threatening. Oh my God. And that's what I did. And then I, in 2014, I was looking into, again, I never was never married, never had kids. And mm -hmm. so all of a sudden I, you know, when YouTube came out and the social media started coming out, I started going down different rabbit holes. I mean, I was always a, always a fan of conspiracies, but until okay. the internet really came into its own, it wasn't, it wasn't that efficient. And mm -hmm. then I, that's when I looked into Flat Earth. 
And, oh, wow. And I said, never, never given a second thought. Like most people, it's like, oh, it's terrible. Right. It's awful. Why would you ever look at that? And right. then that took nine months in the beginning of 2015 is when I made, I mean, you watched the documentary, so you know, yeah, I made, yeah. made the, the Flat Earth Clues, put it out there, said, okay, academia world, shut me down. And honestly, right. thought, they, honestly thought they would. And yeah. they didn't. And here we are, 2019. Yeah. And I don't know how many of the conferences I'm going to be doing this year, but there oh, are really? conferences in, I'm going to the one in LA in two, three weeks. And oh, then there's, there's one in LA in a few weeks. Yeah, there's one in LA in, in a few weeks. Then there's. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're you're down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh yeah. You, if you want if you want to run into me, I'm, it's called the Question Everything Conference, and oh, uh, awesome. I'm going to be okay. speaking at it. And then there's going to be uh, there's one in Toronto, there's one in Dallas, uh, one in London, oh. one in Amsterdam, Auckland. And those wow. are just the English speaking ones that we know of. And so, wow. yeah, I know I, I'm, I've got to book my tickets for Auckland. I've never been there. Yeah. So right. That, uh, that'll Long be flight. fun. <laughs> I've never been to London either. So that'll be, that'll be interesting. So luckily my passport's up to date. Right. Who, uh, who runs these conferences, the different people? Yeah. Different yeah. Different, different. I mean, some of the same names you'll see, uh, yeah. right now, but, but different people, uh, in different different parts of the the world uh it's fascinating uh, this thing has really really taken off to where 2019 uh, for us has really become the the year of the conferences to where it's kind of branched out away from the internet and now it's mm. it's word of mouth right yeah so. wow that's interesting i'm gonna check out that la uh one i didn't even really know about the movement until i interviewed eddie bravo with jujitsu fame you interviewed sure. eddie bravo I did. Uh, he was super cool. <laughs> wow, that's really awesome. Because nobody, I mean, he he is really picky about who he talks to. He hates me for some really? reason. Really? Yeah, he doesn't trust me. There's there's quite a, you know, because it's the conspiracy crowd. So, yeah. uh, you know, if any rumors start, it's like, oh, yeah, he's probably a government agent. Uh, that, there was a guy that started that th back in 2015, and it is not... I cannot shake that thing no matter what. I mean, people meet me. I mean, shake hands, spend time with right. me. And it's like, oh, yeah, I totally can't trust this guy. Like, what? Are you serious? <laughs> Which is why I was really, and, and it has to some degree, I was hoping the documentary would help to that capacity. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's most, of, most of the time it has. Uh, okay. But it's it's still tough. Uh, it's a label that, tough yeah, to, I but Eddie Bravo is one of them. Yeah, well, Eddie Bravo, uh, so I do jiu-jitsu. I love it. And I was actually doing a jiu-jitsu story for a class. Um, he beat this really famous uh, guy, Hoyler Gracie, when he was a brown belt. Right. And that's kind of like when Tenth Planet took off. So I was interviewing him about that. I went to his L.A. headquarters and watched a class. But because the students knew I was there as a journalist, they were like, Eddie, tell us about Flat Earth. And he just went on this like 20 minute <laughs> rampage yeah. about it. So yeah, yeah. It, I'm, I'm glad that he's in it. And I'm, I'm, I'm sad that he's kind of tied to Joe Rogan in that capacity. Cause Joe, yeah. Joe does not want to deal with it, but no. that's fine. You know, yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, as long as he keeps doing what he's doing, I'm, I'm, I'm still happy that he's in it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's, he's fascinating. That's yeah. for sure. Um, let's see. Well, so you told me a little bit about this. Um, so before you were into other conspiracy theories, right, right. what specifically led you to look into flat earth? Boredom. Really? Well, yeah. Yeah. It was, it's, it can, in fact, I, I, I'll coin a term here, uh, which is conspiracy boredom where <laughs> I looked at just, I had an opinion on just about every conspiracy you could think of. I had oh, an wow. opinion. I didn't like anything. You know, you, you, the funny thing about conspiracies, you could go around and say, give me your top 50, right? Ask right. any people and they're all, and ranked by importance, they're all going to be different. Yeah. Uh, and, and they're really, people are really passionate about it. It's like, what, how can that be above that? And that, you know, and people get in arguments over the ranking system, which is why we don't do right. it. <laughs> um, but I, I looked into just about everything and really, Everybody knows about flat earth. Everybody knows about it. Of course, mm -hmm. it's one of the oldest terms. It cuts through just about everything you can think of. There is, I've yet to run into a single person that you say flat earth to. And they say, right. never heard of it. Okay. No, no. Yeah. They, they'll always say, oh, you're one of those. Or, <laughs> or, oh, that's crazy. Or, oh, that's really crazy. 
Uh, right. And so I kept seeing it in recommendations on the right hand side of oh, yeah. uh, of YouTube, and I completely ignored it. And then I started looking into um, Hollow Earth a little bit more, which I was into at least six years ago. And okay. I was looking at Admiral Byrd, and oh. I thought that was interesting because when I, I, I referenced, I was referencing Flat Earth, and Admiral Byrd kept coming up in, mm. in Flat Earth. I was going, why would he keep coming up in Flat Earth? Doesn't make any sense. So I started looking into his stuff more, and then I, I kind of made the little connect the dot. I said, you know what? I'm going to spend a little time on Flat Earth. But I remember, I don't think I said this in the documentary, I remember the first time I clicked on a Flat Earth video, I was mm. physically flushed when, really? meaning, meaning, and look, let's be honest here. Like if you're on the internet of any given, you know, enough years, you've clicked on some pretty weird stuff. Oh, and right? The internet is full <laughs> of stuff you should not be clicking on or, or even accidentally that you run into. It's like, oh man, right. you don't want to be there. And <laughs> so, but I'd never been embarrassed by it. And I mean, yeah. like, and all of a sudden I'm clicking on this and I'm going, why am I getting embarrassed on clicking on a Flyers video? I've clicked on stuff that's way worse than this. Why would I, why would that happen? And then all of a sudden it right. occurred to me, it's like, wait a minute, what? And then I caught myself, it's like, what, why would I care? And right. then I started digging, you know, a little um, introspective on it. Yeah. And then it, I realized it was because of the conditioning, which is uh... people, it's the only conspiracy we de debunk to children. Mm. And nothing else. We don't tell children about JFK or 9-11 or oh, Pearl man. Harbor or any of that other stuff. We don't, we don't do that. But we put a globe in their classroom when they're six years old. That's yeah. what we do. And we leave it there time and time. You know, it's always there. It's always with right. them. The CIA would pay good money for conditioning like that. And mm. yeah. we do it for free, basically. We're, we're right. volunteers. Oh, black globe in the classroom? Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's... Well, I'm sorry, what was the original question on that? Oh, uh, just how you, what, how, what led you? Oh to yeah, that was it. That was it. That's how I yeah, got yeah. into it. And then I, I thought I could shut it down. Again, the t-shirt would read, I got into flat earth because I tried to debunk flat earth. Everybody mm -hmm. hates it. Uh, this, women are more open-minded than men. And so women don't really? tend to hate it as much. Yeah. Uh, but men really hate it for whatever reason. Really? It goes against their whole, especially American men. You know, it's like, oh. oh, wave, wave the flag. You know, what are you saying? That Apollo, our astronauts are lying to us? That's unimaginable. Right. Seriously, there was, a, there was a woman on Fox News, uh, Dana Perino, uh -huh. uh, who used to be one of the um, uh, press sec secretaries for Bush back in the day. Mm -hmm. And she said on Fox, as they were talking about how um, when um, Stephen Curry was talking about yeah. how, you know, the the earth, he didn't believe in the moon missions and her right. line I thought was really telling. And I thought it was almost profound at the, at the time, which was, I believe in the moon missions because I'm a patriot. Ooh. And it's like, really? That's Whoa. a, that's an interesting take on it, which is yeah. if you're a good American, you have to believe in the moon missions. Interesting. It's like, yeah. ooh, it's like, ooh, that's 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 dicey, isn't it? Because yeah. then it's like, okay, no matter what the government says, you have to believe it. I mean, yeah, basically, yeah. whatever comes out of the White House press briefings, that is gospel. And it's like, oh boy, because you know, yeah. Dana can say, and Dana's fine. She's saying that, but look, that's yeah. Fox News. Were you saying yeah. that? Or, 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 would you have said that line if Obama had said that? Probably not, because yeah. Fox is against you know. Then oh yeah, the partisan oh, yeah. thing. So it's like, uh, but the way she had said it, but she wouldn't have been alone. I had a guy who yelled at me during an interview um, where they were taking calls. <laughs> so fun, where. <laughs> He said, my father worked at NASA. Are you calling my father a liar type thing? Ooh. And I was going, going, no, no, I'm not calling him a liar. I'm saying he didn't know. He didn't know any better. We, why would we tell your father? You know, right. why would we tell any of this? You know, it, it, it's, it's for a select group of people. You don't have to tell the wrench turners. All you have to tell is the telemetry guys. And that's very, mm -hmm. very small amount. Um, yeah. Which is why I referenced uh, in the clues uh, Capricorn 1, which I thought mm. was a very, I don't know if you ever watched it. Uh, uh -uh. Fascinating movie independent film and the reason in fact the reason why that movie was made which is about a fake mars mission back in the day oh. one of uh, uh interesting i mean seriously the cast all-star cast including by the way a younger oj simpson uh as, oh my as, gosh. As, as like the first black astronaut which was weird but yeah. it, the whole movie was made because there was a cbs affiliate who was old enough it was 10 years earlier when the apollo mm -hmm. missions were happening and he was watching the Apollo missions on television. He was going, mm. this is some of the worst production I've ever seen. You know, not, he was saying, I wasn't saying he was fake. He was right. saying that it was just a terrible production. He goes, he goes, I could make 
a better moon landing than these guys could with a set, with a movie set. And he, he took it even further. He said, you know what? I can make a better Mars mission than they could make a better moon mission. Oh. And so he made a movie. It's the independent. It was an independent film in the late 70s called Capricorn huh. One. About, yeah, that. about what would NASA do if they had technology problems, but they were committed to the project anyway? Uh. Would they lie and just release, would fake some of it? And that's what right. we're really talking about here. I mean, yeah. everyone knows the rockets go up, but you don't right. have to, you know, that part is real. I mean, we, the, the rockets, they lift off. Yeah. But everything on the inside of the rocket, well, you don't have to make that real if you don't want to. Mm. And that's what they were hinting at in Capricorn 1. Sorry, oh, I ramble. This is what I do. No, I'll have to watch that. It sounds fascinating. Oh, you really should watch it if you get a chance. It's yeah. with, um, you you know, the, so like Josh Brolin, he's one of the, you know, yeah. one of, well, his dad, um, James Brolin. Is it James Brolin? His father. He's part of the yeah. Hollywood, you know, legacy. His father right. was was the lead astronaut in Capricorn. Oh, oh I didn't realize that. Okay. And then his son oh, yeah. ended up doing Men in Black, which I thought was interesting. Right. No so, kidding. Yeah. <laughs> it, I didn't think about that connection. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Steph Curry uh, graduated from Davidson, which is my, where I got my first bachelor's degree. Nice. So he's our pride and joy, you know. Small Division One school. <laughs> how long? How long did he last after he mentioned the moon missions? Forty-eight hours, and then oh, all yeah. of a sudden he had to meet with Scott Kelly, and then next thing you know, he was donating money to science research. Yeah, right. fantastic. Yeah, no backpedaling there at all right. whatsoever. Oh, yeah, he definitely was like, "Oh, I was just joking, right?" Yeah, yeah. Kyrie. <laughs> did, I mean, it's like, look, Kyrie didn't backpedal. Shaq backpedaled in ten days. I think they're learning right. their lesson now. It's like, I, I'm surprised they let Kyrie go as long as they did. Yeah, well, it's this political correctness we have now too. I guess. You know, it's, I everyone guess. is like, you'd be destroyed if you make one comment that is off color, or, or yeah, you know. Yeah, but the, but but criticizing the American moon missions, how off color yeah. is that? Right. No, it's not. But no. <laughs> um, so when you were exploring flat Earth, right? Um, obviously, NASA is part of that. Um, what? specifically about nasa i guess do you distrust i it, it was something that had bugged me for years which mm -hmm. was it, look, look the moon missions have been under scrutiny almost since they quit <laughs> mm -hmm. i mean back right. in the and we're talking 1972 when there were three television networks and you know mm -hmm. most of people people everybody still had a newspaper subscription back in 72 right. um and I did not like the moon missions because of the glare. I mean, I could give, show you one image. In fact, I'm thinking of doing that for some of my talks this year. Just showing one image of the people. I go, tell me how many things are wrong with this with this pic. Uh, with this pic. Yeah. And, but I couldn't come up with a good enough reason. It, it wasn't mm -hmm. the question of if they faked it. It's something was bugging me. I had no doubt that they were faking it. The question is, mm -hmm. what? Why? What, what there's i right. didn't have a good enough reason for it it's like yeah i get the whole wave the flags the ussr sucks go team you know right. red versus blue i get that but it wasn't a great reason right because mm. you're still spending huge amounts of money i mean yeah you're creating jobs i suppose it's one that's one good thing right but look there's better ways to build more dams if you're just going to create more jobs right but then when i got into flat earth it occurred to me that it wasn't a question of wanting to fake the moon missions. You had mm -hmm. to fake the moon missions. Ah. Because if you didn't, eventually what would happen, is, like with anything nowadays, eventually one of the private companies would uh, get involved. Uh, uh, meaning okay. uh, you know, the, the people that actually supply the parts. You know, NASA is just a government organization. They don't actually build really anything. I mean, most of the parts come from Boeing and McDonnell Douglas and General oh, Dynamics and stuff like that. Uh oh, did our video freeze? Because you, you are frozen right now. Can you hear me? I'm escaped. Woo. All right, lost you. Yeah, I got wow, you back. What? All right, I'm not going to move that window anymore. Whatever happened there? <laughs> it's, that it's, what it was. It's weird. <laughs> well, no, the connection. It's weird because I actually still see your name over the top of your image, and I can't shrink down your window any more than normal. But that's okay. Huh. It's not. It's not that much of a distraction. Oh. Okay. So, Poor connection. Switch to audio only. Nah, nah, we'll we'll be fine. Nah. <laughs> we're fine. But if it but if you want if you want to, just let me know. Okay, okay. so that that's really what kind of got me focused on NASA, which was mm -hmm. the that the you it was one of those things where. Okay, think of it this way. Let, let's think of a bigger bigger picture here. So, 
you've been telling everybody for 500 years that it's a globe. Mm -hmm. But all you've been doing is telling people you have no images of the earth from space. Well, mm -hmm. how long before people are going to start saying, hey, shouldn't you get, you know, we've got globes in the classroom. Don't, shouldn't mm -hmm. we even got rockets and stuff, right? So eventually you're going to have to show people an image. Problem uh -huh. is, is you can't just hand them an image because the first question is, how did you take it? All right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and well, you got to come out. So you, it's the, it's the most expensive fake picture in the in the history of pictures because you have to create a technology that at least gives you the impression that you could get up high enough to take the shot mm -hmm. and then once you take it in 1972 one of the okay you want to say what big things got me suspicious for nasa was this apollo um 11 was of course the first moon mission right but you right. also had apollo 8 and apollo 9 and and after that you had 12 13 14 you know, 13 yeah. of course and then yeah. uh, 14 15 16 and 17 well mm. During the entire Apollo 8 through Apollo 16 run, there were no images of the Earth from space. Not full disc blue marble shots. In fact, the blue marble wasn't coined until Apollo 17. The last chance you could, it was like, it was like, like the final season of any television series, right? Apollo 17, we're not going there anymore. So this right. is it, right? And on the way home, right. it's like, yeah, maybe we better take a shot of the Earth from space. On the way home, last ditch effort. I mean, talk about dragging your feet. And then right. after that... That's when that was the last shot they ever took. And hmm. here's what I mean by that uh, until 2015, meaning right. they milked that image for 43 years. Hmm. One shot from Apollo yeah. 17. And I knew this because, I, again, I couldn't see the forest for the trees. Uh, I was I was running to a tech support thing, doing my thing in Boulder. Right. And I thought, oh, wouldn't it be cool to put iconic shots of the globe on all these different tech support monitors because I ran the team. And I was doing Boolean searches on the internet. The internet wasn't wasn't brand new. I mean, it was there was right. stuff up and running. And I kept saying Earth from space, different di vision, versions of that Earth. You know, could not. I just kept getting rows and rows and rows of the exact same image, which was the Apollo 17 shot. Mm. And I'm sitting there looking at the screen, going, "NASA, you suck." You're terrible at this. I mean, not not just your internet presence is terrible. How can you only have one shot of the Earth from space? Yeah. Well, because they only had one shot of the Earth from space hmm. to where when the first iPhone was created, and, it, and you can look this up, it's a fascinating article. Um, a guy named Robert Simmons mm -hmm. was the guy that made the image for uh, that phone, which is, you know, if you remember this, oh, right. was, the, was the globe, right? Well, the right. thing was, he had to create it from scratch because there were no images of the earth from space. He goes, he goes, oh, he goes, in fact, he's famous, it's an audio interview. And he goes, oh yeah, of course it had to be Photoshop because it had to be. He goes, we didn't have hmm. any, I didn't have any images to work off. So I had to create it from scratch. And he showed all the layers and he got so lazy. We were the ones that figured this out. He got so lazy, it was like, what? He had to finish this on a Friday or something? Because on the <laughs> Southern hemisphere, he just used a cloning tool. I don't know if you know Photoshop at all. And just clone the hell out of the clouds and put all these, mm. the same clouds in the Southern hemisphere because no one would notice. And because the image mm. was so small, most people didn't notice. But then mm. when we blew it up, it's like, oh man, you are lazy. Now here's the, uh, interest, here's the interesting part, part about that, which is when I went down to the Kennedy Space Center down in Houston mm, to, right. to check it out. And I went inside uh, the big showcase 747 with a shuttle on top. I'll be darned if they didn't have a blown up poster board image of that globe sitting uh -huh. in the NASA display. Why would you have a completely admitted photoshopped mm. image of the, because that's all they had. Huh, meaning, okay. And meaning the second blue marble shot was not taken until the summer of 2015 after, we, oh. after we came out. And we knew this because they were not shy about telling everybody Obama did a press release. Uh, mm. uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson tweeted it. NASA tweeted it. Heck, Scott Kelly wrote the press release, apparently from space. Oh, wow. And it's like, even though he did not take the image, it was probably taken by uh, um, a uh, satellite that was a million miles. Nice round number because you got to make it easy for the public. <laughs> uh, a million miles away. Yeah. Those things. Sorry. I'm, the, f I, I can't overstate this. 43 years in space technology terms is forever. So mm. you're telling me that most of the 70s, all of the 80s, all of the 90s, all of 2000, 2010, and halfway to 2020, no one took a shot of the Earth in, mm. a, in full disk sunlight? Nobody, all those things flying around up there, no nation right. took a shot from the Earth? No, they didn't. And mm. it's like, sorry, uh, in, you say, does that prove a flat Earth? No, it does not. 
but it puts into uh, puts a huge amount of suspicion on what NASA is doing. I mean, most mm. people don't even know like the space shuttle program was killed eight years ago. Right. Americans don't even know that. It's like there, there yeah. are no space shuttles anymore. In fact, we don't even launch from they're thinking of actually finally doing it this year. Just keep mm. saying that we don't even launch from the, the states anymore. We launch from Russia. Yeah, Why, we, aren't right. we in a aren't we in the perpetual Cold War with Russia? Why are we launching right. and landing in Russia? Uh, yeah. Because they can control the airspace and we can't. We're you know mm. we're we want to make things loose and nice for people. We don't want right. people in super yachts chasing things. Right. Know, because on the internet yeah. now you can figure things out. It's like oh this booster is going to land such and such. We should go out there. No 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 you can't have that. Hmm. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. No, I, it's all fascinating to me. Um, what do you think about like what Elon Musk is doing? Do you think do you trust that? Or? Elon Musk is one of the worst people to put in front of a camera I have ever seen or heard <laughs> in my life. His quotes, his statements are so outlandishly bold isn't even the word. When I heard I was up in Canada living um, with a flat earther up there. And when I heard that, that two, this is the early part of 2017, he said by summer of 2018, note what time it is now, that right. summer by summer of 2018, he was going to send two tourists around the moon and back. Oh yeah. And, and I'm, I'm going, and I'm doing the math I'm going on my fingers. I'm going, wait, you got less than 18 months and you're going to send two tourists around the moon and back, even though we've done nothing, no manned thing has even been done since 1972. And you're going to do this. You're going to send two tourists, even though you have no capsule, you have no booster, you have no pilots. W what are you doing? Right. Yeah. Um, you're talking about a guy who, and I, I know the public has such a short attention span, but yeah. if you ask the average person on the street, who created Tesla motors? at least half of them would say it's Elon Musk. No, Elon Musk bought Tesla Motors. Oh. He didn't invent, see even you, he yeah, didn't, didn't, no, it was like, um, if you know anything about sports, uh, the Dallas Mavericks were not created by Mark Cuban, right? Mm -hmm. He bought them. Right, and, yeah. And so, and, but history remembers the, the winners in this case. Look, uh, Elon Musk, I'm sure was a fine software developer. I mean, he yeah. made his money because he, cre he helped create PayPal. That's where he made right. his money. And All when right. it finally went public, he had a nice chunk of stock options and he became uh, a billionaire instantly. Right. Yeah. And then he applied for government grants and they realized that he was their guy when you want to come to solar power and all this stuff. And then this private yeah. space program. No, the, the Tesla Roadster in space was and it did not get a lot of traction and was was an interesting experiment on their part, because when they put it up there. I, I, I'm not kidding you when I say this, the, the image that was shown to me, because I woke up and somebody had sent me, it's like, oh, look at this, right? And it's the, it's the profile shot of the, the guy in the roadster, the, the mannequin in the roadster oh, and right. the earth behind it. And I go, I go, oh, I, I said, oh, did Jaronism do this? One of our guys, you know, from the channel, I go, I go, which, which guy built this? You know, which guy did the Photoshop on this? You know, because nowadays Photoshop is so good. Yeah. You could fake any image. And, and, and somebody goes, no, man, it's real. I'm like, oh. I, my, I seriously started developing a facial tick and I was going, what? What are you talking about? It's like, no, supposedly there's a roadster in space right now. I'm going, and then we just, we just descended upon that thing. And no, no, yeah. there's no way in a million years, uh, the pressure situation. Uh, okay. Let me give you my 60 second rundown on what was wrong with the roadster. Um, just about every compressed system, everything from the window washer fluid to the transmission fluid to uh, the brake fluid, anything that's in a compressed system would have burst immediately. The vacuum, mm -hmm. in a pure vacuum, and I've talked to vacuum experts, they said it would, yeah. things would have just detonated. Second, uh, the windshields, because we're talking about negative 200 and positive 200 degrees, would have shattered. Yeah. The side windows would have spider webbed instantly. The, the front windshield would have gone. Uh, the, the plastic would have warped. All that stuff would have been, the car would have been trashed. Not to mention, uh, oh, no, the tires, the most obvious thing, because they're just right. thick balloons. Uh, those things would have gone as tight as a drum and burst unless they completely cored them out, which I doubt that they would even have remembered. <sighs> the little suspicious things that bugged me, oh, I don't know. Look at it again and tell me what's missing. I don't know. How mm. about just about every endorsement you can think of? There's two public company mm. and a private company involved here, right? You've got Tesla which and SpaceX, 
right? Oh, right. There isn't a SpaceX logo or a Tesla logo anywhere to be found. That thing should be covered like NASCAR. That thing oh, should be yeah. wall to wall stickers. Not to mention you're using a convertible. Why not use the freaking S series, the flagship? There's four seats and then sell out the seats. You know, heck, you could have you could have sold the entire thing to Disney for millions. You could have put right. you could have put a Stormtrooper, Boba Fett, Groot, and Iron Man in those <laughs> seats and it would have been paid for. They would have paid right. to put but in order to do that, you would they would have said, no, no, we are going to install these things ourselves. And you would have had to have them have access to the car and the plant. Nope, can't do that. In fact, I am sure there were car companies that were calling Elon's uh, uh, people that very next day going, where, how can we put a Dodge Ram into space? How can we put our whatever into space? Oh, yeah. Because nobody buys freaking Teslas. I mean, yeah, you see right. a few of them more in California than other places. <laughs> of course. <laughs> no, it was horrible, horrible, horrible. And there were so many hashtag not buying it, hashtag you got to be kidding, hashtag mm. uh, looks totally fake. Because now we can we can monitor things in real time that yeah. that was it. There, he's never going to be able to pull that stunt again. Never, never, ever. Yeah. Oh, not to mention, what was it? Uh, three different cameras that were on that thing. And... None of the cameras could see each other, which were very, very interesting. The rear view mirror was completely removed, which was odd because hmm. that would have screwed up the camera stuff if you were trying to fake uh, it. <coughs> Sorry. The whole thing was just terrible. Sorry. Yeah. There, there's my yeah, little rant yeah. on Elon Musk. No, Elon Musk is not. To, okay. Last thing on Elon Musk. How can you believe a man who has promised everything, including the moon, and he's never filled any single promise he's ever, ever made, ever? Uh, right. I'm going to solve yeah. the Puerto Rico power problems after that hurricane with my solar portable solar things. Oh, nope. Right. I'm going to save those kids with my little mini submarine. Nope. I'm going to do a special mm -hmm. jetliner that's going to go from the United States to China in under two hours. And it's going to cost less than a first class ticket. I'm going to send two people around the moon and back. And then your neck of the woods, uh, wasn't he supposed to do a, like a high speed bullet train that was going to yeah. go from LA to San Fran or something like that? Underneath. Yeah. Under, yeah. under the ground. Yeah. yeah. How, how's that going? Yeah. Working out? Yeah, doing? I no, no, it's not that, doing yeah. anything. <laughs> he's never. He's make. He makes these amazing headlines. In fact, um, there was a great. In fact, I was really surprised that more media didn't pick it up. On the New York Post, you can look this up. New York mm -hmm. Post ran a story the middle of last year, and literally the headline says Elon Musk is a total fraud. <laughs> Oh, wow. And it, it covered the points which I made. And I was like, I was yeah. like, thank you, please. Somebody, you know, else realized like. He says he makes promises and he never, ever, ever delivers. So no. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, I hate I hate Elon Musk. If I ever get in a chance to go in a room with him, uh, in fact, he wouldn't even take us seriously. He was on Joe Rogan's show. Yeah. And he was giving Joe Rogan's like, no, they're not. They're just trolling, man. They're not. They're not real. And Joe stops him. I will give Joe points for this. Oh. Where Joe's goes, no, man, they're not trolling. They're. Right. <laughs> he goes. They're right. organized. They're articulate. You don't want to. You don't want to just blow these guys off. And and yeah. and Elon's going whatever, whatever. Right. You know, yeah, just not listening at all. No, nope, yeah. he's not. Now, do you, um, I know you are of the theory that there's a dome, like a firmament. Is that right? Sure. Seventy seventy percent at least of the the flat Earth population believes in some sort of dome structure. So okay. and and it really, as far as the shape and the width goes. Take your pick. It's whatever resonates with you. If I, you know, because I've I've rattled off just about every version of this I can think of: snow globe, terrarium, planetarium, mm -hmm. petri dish. Some guy responded better to pizza box than anything else. Uh, there's a cake box, box. Um, but it's a building. You're in a structure. Where the, mm -hmm. the short version is, you're in a building that's so large. The, the scope of it is so large that even our best and our brightest didn't figure out the boundaries of it until about 1960. And when they did, I mean, they had an idea, but until you see it and you haven't seen it. And then when they figured it out, it was like, yeah, we're not going to tell anybody. Hmm. So they didn't. Yeah. And why would, I mean, serious, I, I asked this of most people, I go, would you? If you all of a sudden had that power in your hand, it's like, wow, we should tell the public. And then all of a sudden you have advisors coming to you and going, yeah, that might be problematic because of hmm. X, Y, and Z. I mean, you know, little things like... Uh, educational institutions, the entire world economy, and religion as we know it. Those three things would be turned literally upside down. And yeah. It would, it's, no, they're not going to take that chance. People in power don't take risks. Not like that. Yeah. What is it you think um, they could lose if, if the public knew about that? 
Okay, the three things, uh, I'll, I'll, real, real quick. Uh, educationally, think of it this way. And since you are academically inclined, <laughs> uh, think of it this way. Astronomy and astrophysics, those departments close their doors and don't reopen. They can't. Mm. There's, there's nothing for them to reopen to because you're in a building. Right. Uh, and then the remaining physical sciences, take a geology, archaeology, hydrology, biology, on mm. and on and on. Those right. literally have to be retooled from the ground up because the mm. ground has changed. Okay. That's just the educational system. You're talking about every and, and multiply that by every university in every country simultaneously. Uh, right. Nightmare. Yeah. Nightmare. I mean, you might as well have book burnings. <laughs> In fact, there might be book burning <laughs> parties, which is not a good thing as far as I've heard. Right. Um, the second thing would be the world economy, which is, uh, you know, it, everything is so hypersensitive when it comes to the world economy. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump caught pneumonia tomorrow. The world markets would react to it. And that's just one guy in a, right. in a figurehead office type thing. Uh, yeah. If all of a sudden you, you declared this, there are industries that would rise and fall based on this information huge mm -hmm. industries and not to mention the whole art of war not to be a playoff in the book thing but the whole art of right. war uh do people again i said this in the clues do people go to war and if they don't if, if war becomes not fashionable anymore oh that's a huge amount of money trillions yeah. and trillions of dollars yeah um and then of course the big one which is religion uh, you are talking about uh, 500, at least, we'll, we'll say Copernicus. I don't care if you go back to the Greeks, because if anyone, by the way, goes back, well, no, Greeks proved it. I go, good, because we can burn the books by Copernicus. It's like, <laughs> can you only have one or the other, right? It's either Copernican model or it's the Greek model, but I don't hear anybody calling it the Greek model. It's always the right. Copernican model. So for wow. at least the last 500 years, people are, uh, we've, been, we've been beating people over the head with textbooks, beating religion basically into the ground. All religions mm. and the big five houses, um, Hinduism, Judaism, Buddhism, Islam, Christianity, you know, pretty, pretty big groups, each with, I think, about a billion people a, a pop. Yeah. You're all of a sudden giving them leverage over science. I mean, uh. you're, you are tipping the scales potentially and you're mm. asking, and plus they're motivated on top of it because they don't like science oh. to begin with. Yeah. Do you really want to give that to them are you gonna you're just gonna hand that over to them what's the you know the, the quintessential line which i love what's the worst that could happen <laughs> like oh right. i don't know them opening up all the other can of worms because they're not going right. to stop they won't yeah. stop with just flat earth because next thing you know they'll they'll say okay tell us about evolution tell us about carbon dating tell us about the big bang theory uh, you can throw all that stuff about dark matter and dark energy you've been talking about for the last 20 years Right. Yeah. It, it opens up way too many uh, positions mm -hmm. of dialogue that could potentially create instability mm. uh, to okay. where National Geographic, I'll end it on this, which is National Geographic was the only group that they asked me last year. They said, uh, they sat me down. It was just me. It was interesting. Made sure nobody else was around except for me. And they said, okay, what happens if this thing goes south? I go, what do you mean? Hmm. I go, what happens if flat earth goes out of your control? I go, my control? And they go, doesn't, just, just bear with me. They go, what happens to medicine? What happens to technology? Mm -hmm. What happens to civilization as we know it? Could mm -hmm. you possibly be opening the door to the next dark age? I go, huh? Oh, and I mean, wow. they were seriously worried, concerned about this because hmm. it is, it does open people's minds up. And once they start rolling, if you've ever talked to other flat earthers, they don't stop. Yeah. You can't yeah. go back to the globe. Other people have tried. They can't, even if you wanted to, yeah. you, you mm. can't go back because there's nothing there for you to hold on to because you, yeah. you, because you started in that position anyway. The only reason you left the globe is because it was so flimsy by the time you were done with it. You know, yeah, you may not like flat earth, but you get nothing. The, the line I like to throw at people is, is that. Can I prove flat earth to you right now? No, can't do it. Mm -hmm. But I can prove, I'm sorry. I can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe court case that mm -hmm. you have nowhere mm -hmm. else to turn, but the flat earth, mm -hmm. you know, it's mm -hmm. like where, where you get rid of all this other stuff. Well, the murder obviously is this guy <laughs> or right, you, you know right. the, how the cops always say, I like this guy for the killing. Right. You know, I, yeah. Everybody likes flat earth as the answer. And mm -hmm. uh, I do yeah. too. Yeah. So you're not coming uh, at it from a religious point of view, because I know some people do. At least like, half of the Americans that I've talked to are hardcore Christians that believe that the, the Bible is a flat earth book. Right. And 
I was raised born again Christian, but I'm kind mm. of a weird hybrid because I was in tech for so long that All I right. was a huge science guy or what yeah. I used to call science. And so, right. but, but yeah, when I started looking at the Bible, uh, yeah, it, it was a flat earth book and it's really weird watching pastors hold on to their congregations for one verse. And I don't know, again, you're an academic, so you're probably not a big chapter and verse type person, but I'll give you it real quick which is there's only one verse in the Bible that even hints at the globe one. Hmm. And that, I mean, the Bible is a pretty big book, bestseller, yeah. but a pretty big book, which yeah. is um, Isaiah forty twenty two, which is he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. And all your hardcore people will, will say, well, circle is not globe. It's not ball. It's um, not sphere. Circle is circle. Yeah. Dinner plate is circular. You know, the top, your dining room table is probably circular, Right. but they're using that as, as though it's got veto power over, every other book in the bible mm. including i don't know genesis pretty important book so right. which talks yeah. about the firmament you know genesis right. 1 8 and so you've got pastors that are scared to death and I've, i see it week in and week out where you have people coming to us like you know pastor johnson what do you think about the flat earth and they're they're like oh silly and then they start and more and more people it's like they have to address it and yeah. the ones that the, the reason why most of them don't you know, they, they, they try to shy away from it. it is the same reason why a lot of people with big radio shows have a hard time trying to interview with me because they're afraid of the backlash. Mm, if you, yeah. are you going to be brave enough to go to your congregation after, I don't know, Ben was like, say, say 10 years say, yeah. by the way, that Bible you're holding in your hand, that's a flat earth book. I mean, it sounds like a simple thing, but right. you're so scared of what may come at you. I mean, mm, it's like they're yeah. afraid that people are going to start grabbing heads of lettuce and tomatoes and just start winging them at them. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 I was raised Southern Baptist. Ooh, so I'm go. very familiar with that line of thinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's interesting though, but we do have a flat earth. There was a pastor that was, um, that was fired recently last year because what? he just attended a flat earth conference and what? word and word got out. Uh, yeah. No kidding. Yeah. It's, I mean, for some people, like, we, had an, we had an engineer, a uh, structural engineer, who made a series of videos called Balls Out Physics, where he was, he was saying, look, from a structural engineer standpoint, he goes, we, it's absolutely flat. He goes, we, and, and I've, I've got a subject matter list, which is as long as your arm, with all these mm -hmm. great people. And what I didn't realize, and I should have guessed, was when, if, you, if, if you're part of a profession that you need a certification for, once you right. get that certification, you are beholden to the conditions of that certification, meaning mm. you have to represent. I didn't know there was a clause like this. You have to represent yourself that mm. does not embarrass the profession. And oh, so wow. somebody called up the, the engineer board and said, oh yeah, this God. guy's making flat earth videos and he's building buildings. I don't think he should be doing that. They, they didn't even hesitate. They called him up in two seconds and he huh. had to distance himself immediately from yeah. he had to tear down his youtube channel remove all you know he was he was co-sponsoring the con the first convention in raleigh in 2017. oh wow that was the big one was it's like it's yeah. one thing to make videos on youtube but co-sponsoring a convention right that's a little little harder core. too much yeah, yeah yeah and that was your first conference correct yeah the, the 20, 2017 in raleigh? in raleigh that was great okay okay love that yeah. one yeah i bet yeah um so let's see I know there's people argue, well, actually, let me ask you this first. Um, so we talked about the Apollo mission and the image from space. Right. Do you believe there is even space or, um, I can, or that we even got? I can throw that. Yeah. No, no, I get that question a lot. And I can throw that back at you. Why does there have <laughs> to be space? Is that, in fact, who told you there was space to begin with? The military? Right. Those guys? The, the ones that said we went to the moon? You don't have to have space. And, and by that, I mean, it's the art of illusion. Uh, mm -hmm. this is, that's why I, I, t I kind of tongue in cheek say it's a, a, a soundstage Hollywood backlot because mm -hmm. Hollywood is all about illusion. Um, watch the movie Gravity with Sandra Bullock and tell mm -hmm. me that space can't be faked. Uh, and wow. you say, well, that's now. It's like, oh, really? Watch 2001, A Space Odyssey by Stanley Kubrick. Tell right. me space can't be faked. Though, I mean, that, that was part of the conspiracy of Apollo going all the way back, which was that Kubrick, the whole reason that, why was he allowed five years to make that movie with an unlimited budget? And why were, right. were the rumors, even though they're pretty scrubbed now, that the United States military backed him, you know, were, were part of the financiers 
and that he was allowed mm. to keep he had to reinvent film lenses for this thing uh, kind of mm. like and it, it's it, it makes perfect sense because you're going to hire somebody you hire uh, a, somebody who's really good at what they do not at the top of their game but but really hungry for it you write him an unlimited check and then he comes back and says hey whatever research i do on faking space can I you can I can I show that? And he turned it into a freaking movie, which still to this mm. day, watch two thousand one on Blu-ray. It's flawless. Mm. It's absolutely freaking mm. flawless. Um, but there doesn't have to be space, and here's why. If ninety nine point nine percent of the people believe the illusion, mm -hmm. that's what you go with. You go with the illusion. Meaning, if we're in a building, uh, and, and let's say it's a giant planetarium, right? And ninety nine percent of the people on the ground believe that whatever you're projecting on the ceiling, the stars in the sky are the real thing. They're believing whatever you tell them. Great. That's it. You don't yeah. have to. And, and, and this is where we kind of jump the rails for a sec because uh, people have come back and say, well, you're saying that God's lazy. If you know the whole God thing, which is if God right. can make a universe, why does he make a universe? I'm going, I'm not saying God's lazy. I'm saying God right. is efficient like anybody else. If God doesn't have to make space, why would he? And I'm saying he, hmm. I'm uh, only, right, you know, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not trying to be that, uh, but, yeah. but, but, <laughs> but that's what I mean. I mean, if, if everyone believes the illusion, then that's all you have to make is the illusion. So hmm. be, um, I, I, I don't have my props right next to me, but you have a globe right, right here. And then you mm -hmm. have the flat model, which is, you know, an enclosed little snow globe. Right. And you think, well, and you little put them right next to each other. It's like, well, they look pretty similar in size. I'm going, yeah, but the globe doesn't exist on its own. The globe takes huge amounts of resources just to exist, meaning you need a sun for it to revolve around. You need a galaxy to go around that and you need a universe to go around that, right? And you're talking mm -hmm. about huge amounts of geometry and trigonometry and calculus and quantum physics and so on and so on, right? Mm -hmm. Flat Earth in a globe or a Petri dish, that's it. That's all you need. It's self-contained. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to, again, it's so easy to grasp that you don't need, but again, I get that question all the time because people will say, yeah. well, isn't there space outside of the dome? I'm going, why? If you can't see being, if we're projecting space onto the dome, why do you need real space outside of it? The only mm. reason you think there's real space is because it's been driven into your head since you were old enough to watch television. That's it. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I, what I like to think that's outside of here, it's not space. It's an unlimited universe, uh, but mm. it's not uh, an unlimited reality, but it's not this empty, as Carl Sagan would say, uh, this empty, vast, hollow place that seems like a waste of space. Because remember, mm. most of, you know, they describe the universe, most of it's nothing. There's nothing out there. Right. It's like, wow, seems like, you know, a lot of nothing for what? What are you getting out of right. it? Why not? Yeah, just... yeah right. Hmm. Never thought of it that way. Yeah. Um, let's see. One more kind of technical question, and then I just have some, like, you know. Sure. Uh, what's the word? Yeah, well, I'll go. With it. Anyway, uh, so I know one argument against the flat earth is, oh, what about airplanes you know seeing the curvature of the earth through airplanes what is your counter to that? oh hell that's that's too easy you're gonna softball me that one <laughs> um i told people in the beginning i said well okay first off the airplane argument doesn't even begin to start because i've had people tell me they've seen the curve at every level of elevation literally i've had say people say i've seen it from a mountain I've seen, I've said, people say, I see it from the top of a building and I've had people say they can see the curvature literally on the beach. At that point, you're going into the whole Orwellian issue, which is, mm. it's not that you see the curvature, you want to see mm. the curvature. And that's a big right. difference. And if you're a Star Trek next gen, that'll probably make more sense because a lot of people still don't read Orwell, uh, which is when Picard was shown four lights or five lights. And at the end, you know, he because he there was only four lights and they kept saying, no, there's um, five lights. And the end of the show, which I thought was very telling, he goes when he was talking to Riker, he was confiding in him. And he says, you know what? He goes, the scariest part to me was just before I left, I could see five lights because mm -hmm. they just kept hitting him with it, and hitting him with it. Right. Anyone that says and I've, I've again, I've told this to and I'll tell this to you as well. Mm -hmm. Anyone says they can see a curve from any elevation. I say, fine, you take a snapshot of it, you put it on a laptop or whatever, you put a straight edge up to it, tell me that curve is still there. If it is, you can send it to me and I will quit Flat Earth tomorrow. Mm. That was three years and change ago. 
no mm. one to this day. Plus, not only that, I've talked to many pilots, including a, a wonderful KLM pilot that was uh, fired because mm. she told her airlines, like, look, she goes, the earth is flat. And they go, they said, we will not put you up in the air until you renounce that. It's like, wow. Wow. Yeah. Um, and I can also send you in two seconds uh, several videos of weather balloons taken at 120,000 feet that mm. show no curvature at all, mm. as opposed to the Red Bull jump, which was taken at 130,000 feet, very small difference right. between the two, that shows a curve so vast that apparently the world is the size of Arizona. Uh, and yet huh. they don't, nobody renounces that. They say, oh, look, yeah. the curvature, it's a great image to put on the front page of, a, of some website. Right. It's like right. Oh, the Red Bull jump. He's only at 120,000 feet. Neil deGrasse yeah. Tyson has said several times on stage where he's like, look, he goes, you cannot see the curvature from an airplane. You, you, you'd have to get really, 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 really high to see the mm. curvature at all. And it's something mm. like it's like one degree per 69 miles out. I don't know what the elevation is, but it doesn't really matter. We can't yeah. see it. We can't. Mm. And that's one of the first things that people did on their own that had nothing to do with me which was uh it's the very first argument which was um they people come came back and said they they start rushing to the beaches and start taking long distance photography and they right. said there's, there's no curve at all and i said well there might be a little curve they go no no no, no. there's no curve there's no curve hmm. at all and i go really nothing and they go no and they were shooting images at whatever 30 50 70 100 miles away with mm -hmm. the thing that changed in fact let me back up real quick which is they will um one of the in fact, I'm going to do a debate, I think, with some guy down in L.A. when I'm down there. And I say, oh. and the, one of the arguments I throw to people, I say, OK, can you t tell me how the Earth is a globe without using NASA? Because almost everybody is saying, well, we've seen the, the images and the ISS and the Apollo and all this. I go, OK, throw that out for a second. And they go, mm -hmm. why would you throw it out? I go, well, because NASA didn't invent the globe. Remember, NASA only took the first shot in 1972. But we knew for 500 years before that that it was a globe. How did we know? Um, in fact, I'll use a, a George Orwell line real quick on you, which is, it was a great quote. He wrote it in 1946 and he said, and he's not a flat earther. And he said, he was talking about science. Now people just believe whatever science says. And right. he said, I could go on the street and you ask anyone on the street how they know it's a globe. And they say, well, duh, we just know it's <laughs> a globe. And then when you push them on and say, well, yeah, but how do you know? They start getting angry because they don't know how they know. Remember, this was mm -hmm. in 1946. NASA wasn't even founded until 12 years later. How did everybody right. in the world know it was a globe in 1946? Because they were told. That's all. Mm. That's all that happened. No, nobody had any proof. They just were giving him the freaking globes over and over and over again. But nobody got high enough until you get high enough to go back and look like they, with anything. It's like, oh, that's what it looks like. Yeah, we're not telling anybody. The um, uh, sorry, but where was it going with this? Uh, sorry, what was the original question? Just the airplane. You know, oh yeah, 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 the airplane. the airplane. So yeah, when people when people say they they can see uh, the curve from the airplane, no, not not in a million years. Every pilot I have talked to, in fact, it's fascinating. The pilots have this weird paradox. They tell me the same thing. Whether they say, yeah, when you're in the cockpit, especially forget about the side view mirrors. The cockpit's the way where you want to be. They say, oh yeah, we absolutely see a completely flat horizon all the time, but it can't be totally flat because we it's a globe, right? And I go, yeah. Mm. And then they start realizing the reason why pilots don't ever say anything other than it being a reputation killer is right. that they're too busy. It's like it's really, it's yeah. seriously, all you're getting from point A to point B with nobody dying, you know, and yeah. everything's fine. Yeah. Nobody got sued. And, hey, right. that's a good day. Yeah. Rinse and repeat. We'll just keep doing that for 30 years and retire and nobody talks about it. But the yeah. second part is because they want to be employed. Uh, yeah. There was a, a famous Japanese pilot, commercial, wasn't even, he was a cargo pilot flying out of Japan, Japanese guy. And he was followed by a giant UFO uh, over Alaska. And he gets, he hits the ground. He's, he couldn't have been happier to talk to the reporters. He goes, this thing was <laughs> huge. It had followed us. And in fact, even the Air Force had them had doing maneuvers, trying to, trying to figure out a way to dodge this thing because it wouldn't go away. Thing was just it was like five times bigger than the the 747, and he gets on the ground. It's like you know he's he couldn't have been happier to talk. What what do you think happened the second he got back to Japan? He never flew he again. Back. He was put on a yeah. desk job, and I was like, yeah, sorry, mm. never ever yeah. happened. Multiply that by a lot. It's that right. even that would have been more preferable than going back to I don't know whoever it is the, the your manager regional manager at your airline and saying I've been looking at these charts. I think the earth's flat. 
they you would have a psych eval immediately <laughs> i mean just immediately so anyway right. so no airplanes yeah, no yeah. no 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 i'm sorry i've got a list of too many people flight flight instructors yeah. uh, commercial airline pilots cargo jets uh, military pilots they all say the same thing we've all heard about the curvature of the earth we've all heard about the coriolis effect which is the spinning of the earth we never right. ever use it it's just something in a manual that it's like yeah it's in there but no it, right, but it's just right. old it's old data that's all it yeah. is huh hmm. okay cool because i've i've seen that argument a lot <laughs> online you know yeah. um all right uh flat earth society i have so eddie bravo doesn't like the flat earth society you know where you got that from yeah, where me <laughs> I was going to say, like, what is your view on it? All right. So the Flat Earth Society, I'm not going to say, am I, am I going to come out and say they're absolutely controlled by the government? No. Um, but at the very, at, at the worst case scenario, yeah, they're, they're, they're funded or at, mm. their administrators are government. Worst case. Best case scenario, they're just apathetic. They were just, uh, I mean, what, when I started doing this in 2014, because there wasn't that much information, I literally applied to that society. It's like, hey, I want the, I want the, the decoder ring and the card, and I want to right. get all that stuff, yeah. And maybe <laughs> you'll know some stuff. I remember going into the forums, and there's these dedicated trolls, literally at the velvet ropes, just turning people away on a regular basis. I mean, said, yeah. there's nothing to see here. It's not real. That was their big line. It's like it's not real. They're just kidding. It's not serious. It's not real. Go away. I'm going. Man, if you wanted to troll people, you could and make people cry. You could sit on YouTube and make people cry all day long. Right. It was not yeah. even hard. I mean, you literally, there's I could point you at a thousand channels. Just make yeah. people cry. And the the society had less than five hundred members. So what are you doing out there? Why are you making thousands of posts? I'm not exaggerating. Here. Thousands of posts yeah. against flat Earth when it's just this tiny little little group out there. Yeah. And I and the thing that was killing me was the the society wasn't stopping them. It was mm. it was like why aren't you these guys are obviously causing trouble. Why right. aren't you shutting them down, right? And they, they just mm. weren't doing it. And so I I literally in the first video I said, "Look, don't even bother." I said, "Don't even bother going to the Flatter Society." And I was absolutely right. I was totally vindicated because 18 months later after we're just tearing up social media. I mean just ripping it to shreds. Right. I have a guy call me. I don't even remember his name. That shows you how much of an impact he made. He calls me up and he says, yeah, we, we really like what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. I'd like to kind of endorse you. And, I, and I, I was as nice as I could be. I said, look, no offense, man, but where have you guys been? <laughs> we, right. we literally have been, I mean, we are Flat Earth 2.0 and they are mm -hmm. Flat Earth 1.0. And 2.0 has just been, I go, we've been running so far ahead of them that we just don't need them. We never needed them. And so yeah. anybody, and yes, the Eric Dubay is part of a flat earth society that he helped break off and he's doing his own thing, uh, but that's, he's Lord, okay. he's Lord King God of that particular little group, uh, okay. which is fine. It, that That's fine. But that started afterwards and, and he, okay. that's his own thing. But yeah. nobody that talked at the conference last year in 2017 or in 2018 had anything to do with, I mean, yeah, I've still got my laminated card from right. the flyer society but that's only so i can show people because it's date stamped it's like look this was this was the part of a group i was in and everyone knows it's like look that's how because i didn't have a lot of information to go on but if i hadn't have joined i wouldn't have right. known i wouldn't have been the signpost to people saying oh yeah right. go away don't yeah. don't go there yeah well I, I have noticed on their forums there's a lot of oh we're not debating this or you know like shut down a lot of that and i was like what What's that about? I don't, I don't know what they're, what they do, to be honest. Yeah. And, and nor, honestly, I don't even really care m most of the time because yeah. they're, um, we, we do, we're so proactive when it comes to stuff that, mm -hmm. uh, we just don't, the social, come on, social media has so many cool facets that yeah. even just a straight up website, <sighs> no, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're a corporation, I mean, websites, doing your own personal website. I don't know if that does anything nowadays. Yeah, I don't think it does so. all social media, it mm. seems. Um, so let's talk about good old Matt Boylan. <laughs> Matt. Uh, by the way, I did not know until I went to the premiere of that documentary. I did yeah. not even know he was in it. I was I was flying there and uh, I was I was meeting up with Patricia 
And I remember I read a news article that that oh. a review, an early review, because they they leaked it to the uh, the Canadian press. Mm. And I remember an early review that something about the only person that looked really crazy was Matt Boylan. I'm going, and I and I wrote Patricia. And I go, do you know that Matt's in this? And she goes, wait, how they how they sign Matt? Because Matt refused to sign anything. He was right. he was complete. Oh, t oh yeah. does not play well with others. I mean, still doesn't. <laughs> Even though we tell him to his face, like, dude, you don't play well with others. And he's like, whatever, go to hell. <laughs> and so he he was the guy that he was one of the turning points for me. That when I looked into Flat Earth, well, yeah, the documentary. That it was an interesting story. His story was interesting, even though I don't believe it was completely true uh, about mm -hmm. how he knew the NASA people. I think he kind of knew the NASA people because he was an interesting, interesting guy. He was a painter. He was yeah. an actor. I mean, you, you've seen the guy. The guy just, oh, the yeah. camera just follows him around like like a, like a circus sideshow that's gone horribly yeah. wrong. <laughs> and I think he was invited, but he's a hell of a painter. I will say that. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Re photorealistic painter. I mean, very, very creative. Oh, wow. I mean, go Neat. gorgeous stuff. And I think he was hired by a NASA guy to help paint his place out in the Hamptons. Wow. I think he was just there because if you're right. gonna, look, look, a nerd party, then you throw in someone <laughs> like Matt. That's perfect. So you just wind right. him up and do his stuff. Yeah. Remember, he was twenty, yeah. probably twenty-five when he was at that party. He's forty oh, now. Wow. So, yeah. but when I heard the story. I, and I'm a big, big believer of plot lines. I, I will trash a movie in two seconds if there's plot holes big enough that I can actually see through them. And <laughs> I love, I mean, a, a plot can make or break any project. I don't care what it is. I go, I've seen right. wonder, I've seen indie movies for less than a million bucks that have better plot lines than you have too, probably than, than movies that are yeah. $200 million. And it's like, yeah, I know there's more producers, but it's like, look, the story is important. Story, yeah. story is important. And when I listened to Matt's story, I said, wow, that is an interesting story. I go, right. I go, in fact, I could, I was like thinking of it, like how it would be shot. And I was going, wow, you pull up from the, the chalk drawing on the ground, you know, where it's the, oh, it looks yeah. like the UN flag. It's going, oh, the way you could shoot it. It's a brilliant Twilight Zone episode. I don't know if you could stretch it into two hours, but it's really cool. Hmm. And then we realize that he just doesn't like doing anything with people. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there was a production team that called me early true television as a matter of fact out in the end of 2015 oh. and They uh, they they every producer just about every producer that's ever ever talked to me has always been the same thing It just kills me every mm -hmm. every every time. It's like it's like hey Like you know, it's like what tell me about Matt Boylan. It's like because they they know I mean any good producer knows it's like yeah this guy I yeah. don't know if we can contain him, but he's really interesting to watch on TV. Yeah and I said, look, you don't want to talk to him. He doesn't like dealing with people. I don't know why. Yeah. And then we had, I remember I warned this one producer and she calls me, I don't know, a couple days later. And I go, so how do things go with Matt? And she goes, she goes, you didn't even do it justice. <laughs> she goes, she goes, the things he was asking for, the things he asked for in the documentary, that's nothing. Yeah. He asked for way worse that's than cool. that and other stuff. And, mm. and, and I go, I go, are you going to use him? She goes, well, here's the thing. They go, they still want to use him, but right. they realize they're just going to have to put him in his own thing. It's like the main mm -hmm. cast would do this. And then yeah. Matt is like in some remote place with like, right. like two or three people that he picked, you know, right. so that if something goes wrong and say, well, you picked him. Uh, <laughs> and, but yeah, Matt, we, we've right. only spoken a couple times on the phone. The rest was through email and yeah. he was just a trial. Um, we we fell apart almost immediately. He called. He wrote me an email. He's literally. I've still saved it on my machine. Um, his first email to me was because the, 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 he says I'm lying. I'm absolutely not lying. The people that were calling me again talk about a blow to the ego. Not that I had any <laughs> at the time. Was it's like you kind of like it felt like high school, which was yeah. so you know about this flat Earth thing. Do you know how to get a hold of Matt Boylan? <laughs> <laughs> so do you think your best friend likes me? Right. What? Can you kind of like? I was thinking of asking him to the Sadie Hawkins dance. Yeah. But and so and Matt would be like, no, no, I'm not doing interviews. And I go, what, right. what the hell am I? Doing? He goes, tell him whatever you want. I'm going fine, right? And right. then he starts seeing that I'm doing interviews. And then he writes me. Yeah. He goes, I'm not kidding. You. Talk about the audacity. He goes, all right. Here's what I want you to start saying in your interviews. It's like, uh, what? 
what? And he goes, all right, first thing you need to do is you start, you got to start attacking the Catholic church. <laughs> go on, oh what? <laughs> Let's go. Why? And he goes, he goes, cause you got to go after the Jesuits, man. You got to go after the Jesuits. And I'm going, come on, man. I, I, it's like no offense, but come on. You can't ask me that, but right. he wasn't alone. Eric Dubay did the same sort of thing. Really? Eric Dubay contacted me and said, all right, here's a couple things. Well, he, he didn't even contact me directly. He had one of his minions contact me because uh, he has people. Right. And he, <laughs> he, he, he they kind of like, okay, here's what Eric needs from you. Eric needs for you first, you need to not reference the Orlando Ferguson map anymore. And you can't use Crow 777's moon footage because Crow isn't a flat earther right now. And oh, Eric's wow. not pleased with what you're doing. It's like, who are these guys? It's like, what? I had no idea no idea what was what was going on and so yeah. at that point i said okay and i wrote my epic email to him and i said look i'm just gonna do do my own thing right. and you guys can either you know be part you we, we, maybe we'll meet up later and yeah. uh funny thing is we never did matt uh <laughs> refused to go to the conferences and yeah. eric officially condemned the conferences but he did get one yeah. champion on his side who happened to be you probably Eddie Bravo. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Eddie Bravo Be loves him. Uh, because, yeah. well, because because uh, Eric's into uh, martial arts. And oh, okay. so he's absolutely got more street cred right there. And since yeah. Eric automatically condemned, and Eric was the guy, you know, immediately whispers to Eddie. He's like, yeah, don't talk to him. That Mark guy. Yeah, don't talk to him. He's uh, and so Eddie Bravo's on Joe Rogan. I mean, listen, it's like, it's like, oh, yeah, that Mark Sargent guy. He's not, he's not very good. It's like, what? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Give me a break. Anyway. I know. Yeah, I, I wrote Eddie just to I know he's been interviewed like a thousand times about Flat Earth, so I I wasn't gonna interview him on that. But I wanted to know if he had convinced any of his students of it, because obviously he has influence. Oh, he absolutely so, did. I mean, huge it, right? Oh yeah, yeah. In fact, did you see the guy that came out? In fact, I have the in fact I'll I'll email it to you as soon as I'm done. Yeah. The his name's uh you can look at the Justin Justin Leader, Leader, no kidding. UFC fighter, Justin Leader. In fact, it was a, it was interesting. It was just, I, I just watched the clip. I think yesterday or the day before, where they were saying, "What do you, what, what's your goal here in this particular tournament?" He goes, right. hey, "To do, to do my best and to promote flat Earth as best I can." And it was totally deadpan. I mean, there wasn't an out, there wasn't a smirk, what? wasn't a wink. I'm going, wow. Yeah. And, and he mentions Eddie Bravo at the end of it, where and oh and, my gosh, yes, send me what you have. Yeah, on yeah. That, the reporter was just thrown. He just I bet. she didn't know what to do. It's like, okay, because <laughs> like, I mean, when you bring it up <laughs> like, to some people, if they don't from? know, then they they're completely lost. Oh yeah, so. yeah. Oh wow, it's fast. Yeah, because yeah. he uh, he's like, oh, you just had to show up to class and you know ask people whatever. But then I think I had referenced the Flat Earth Society because I didn't know you know, they were disputed right. and he was like, no flat earth society's fake. Right. And he, he said, talk to the Eric Dubé or whoever his name is. Yeah. Talk know. to Eric Dubé. Yeah. Even Dubé, though yeah, Eric's yeah. never leaving Thailand. Uh, <laughs> but So for you, who are your favorite authorities on flat earth? Um, lots boy i don't even know if i could if i could organize them in in i'm not gonna i'm not gonna let, rattle them off in order of importance because that would be unfair to them um <laughs> but there are the people that i've worked with so far i mean the the big channels like um uh, jaronism is great jaron campanella uh -huh. like globe busters is great um, okay oh my god paul on the plane is awesome robbie davidson's great rob skiba i love because he 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 claims every time in his speeches that I ruined his life. Um, uh, and there's so many great women in Flat Earth. I mean, talk about, again, uh, conspiracy. Cons this conspiracy world does not have a lot of women in it. It usually skews about 85% or higher men, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because it, women don't tend to go for the negative stuff. You know, it's like it's all dark yeah. and brooding. But right. Flat Earth is not that. <laughs> flat Earth is a really, really happy thing. And... Uh, so like Patricia Steer is awesome and, and yeah. Karen B is great. Um, uh, Doe, who else is out there? Carly Sunshine's awesome. Oh, that's a good um, name. Uh, oh crap. Hang on. Let me pull up a few real quick. There's just a bunch. 
that are yeah. that are awesome. And I don't. I, I'm just looking. I'm just looking through the list. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to crash. Nathan Oakley's awesome. Uh, Roxanne Glenn in in um, England. She's she's great. Uh, just I don't. I don't want to sell anybody short. So, right. but I'll, just about any. There's very few people. I'm one of those guys that doesn't hate anybody. So yeah, yeah I'm not going to recommend Eric necessarily because he's got right. alternative views. Uh, Matt right. Boylan, if I've tried. I've, Lord knows I've tried. Um, ODD Television, he's got a ton of subs. He still doesn't like me for whatever reason. Uh, really? and, and mostly because he's an Eric Dubay guy. The uh, camps, the, yeah. the camps just kill me. Yeah. Um, but every, just about anyone you could think of, Dave Murphy's awesome. Marty Leeds is good. Uh, anyone that, that talked at the conferences. Okay. Are, are are great i love being, okay. that is a, is a david oh god david weiss david weiss is really great from ditrh um it, it, i i i let, let me just put it this way any channel that's got over a certain number of subs i that that because flat earth is based on merit it's mm. based on content it's not like uh, you know, people said what's well, not a initially people said oh it's a leaderless movement and i'm going no 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 it is not right. Occupy Wall Street. This is not. This is not that. Um, it yeah. is based off of content. If you create content and it resonates with people, you move up the ranks. You get mm. subscribers and people listen to you, and, and that's great. Right. Um, but and if you don't, you don't. Um, but like like ODD, you know, has two hundred thousand plus subs. Huge, huge wow. amount of subs. Um, but his demographic is really different but he doesn't he doesn't hang out with a lot of people he does his own thing he mostly he still promotes a lot of his music he, he wants to be a rapper mm. great uh, uh, okay. but but everybody there's very very few people that i will say that i have a problem with right uh, okay so yeah everybody else i think is is awesome i mean i've yeah it's i've i've tried to be um you've probably heard me say this before where if flat earth was a university I would be the freshman recruiter, meaning mm. I get people in the door. I will give you the one, the one one book. I will give you the pamphlet right. and say, okay, right. behind me, like you got a whole bunch of different things you could go do. You want to bash NASA? You want to do street activism? You want to do experiments <laughs> and all the versions of the experiments? You want to make music? Take your pick. You want to right. do advanced map making? You can do all that stuff. Uh, yeah. But I'm most of the time credited for getting people in the door. Right. And then after yeah. that, for whatever reason, there's still people. It's like, oh, that mark was great. But I'm like an, like an album you don't want to yeah, listen cool. to anymore. It's like, all right, fine. <laughs> oh, cool. Anyway. Do you think uh, Patricia would would uh, be willing to be interviewed? Sure. Cool. <clears throat> In fact, you, if there's anybody you think, uh, you uh, just let me know. I can put a... Yeah, I will. Yeah, I'll look at some of these that you pa listed and Patricia's you. Patricia's great on the on the um the the big th I don't even want to sell them short. Patricia's awesome. She's she's you know, you saw the documentary, uh you know, she's yeah. more or less she interviews everybody in the flat earth. That is her skill set. She's very very okay. good at it. Um and there's only one person in the in the big flat earth groups that she's never gotten and that was Eric Dubay. She's oh. even interviewed Matt Right. Well, uh, interview is kind of a light term. She just kind of turned the camera on. And he just talked forever. <laughs> uh, Karen B is also really, really good. Uh, she's okay. She's been coming up strong. On the UK side, uh, Roxanne Glenn just dominates. She's going to okay. be, uh, the, in fact, the, the if you haven't, maybe I'll send you the link to that. Uh, the uh, Guardian article, which just came out this morning, focused on Dave Murphy and her over on the, uh, the UK side and then on Bob from Globusters on our side. Oh, yeah. okay. That just came Great. out. We were yeah. we were kind of waiting for that one, and so they're doing a big tour where they're taking an RV. Last year they took an RV around the UK, and this time they're actually going to take it into Europe. And there's like sixty nine stops all over. Oh wow! Yeah. It's going to be. Oh my god! It's going to be great. That's neat. That's really cool. Yeah. Great. Well, I'll probably come to you a few more times if that's okay oh, that's fine. with questions and people to contact oh I yeah think. yeah yeah happy to do it if you can think of somebody if, you, if you're looking at somebody's content or he's like oh yeah that person might be interesting and you don't know if you can't track them down because some of these some of our guys they just don't put their content it's not easy to find yeah uh, let yes. me know and i will shoot a thing off to him and say hey right. she seems yeah. cool <laughs> awesome yeah i was supposed to uh interview mad mike hughes this morning and but he stood me up <laughs> he stood you up 